All right. To start, I'll just go to my side for a second. And da -da -da, just a sec. Okay. All right. It's already safe space, but <laughs> I'm going to hear. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, they're back in the room watching some Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, that's cool. Saturday. Wait. It's not, <laughs> it's not Saturday morning, is it? <laughs> it's like Saturday. We're not working today. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I was like, did I lose a day? All right. So, let's see. So, do you have any real life experience playing? Um, yeah, I have a fair bit of real life experience, but not in like an organized way, just like friends and bars and so no kind of, clubs kind of stuff. Did yeah, you, no, no real coaching. Do you ever play with like uh, rubbers like these, like that are a bit grippy and stuff? Or? I have a few times, but most of my experience is on pretty, what I realize now are pretty bad paddles. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, then first of all, maybe we should check your paddle settings to make sure that uh, okay. it can work. All right. So what do you what do you have? All right. On paddle surface I have bounciness at seventy-eight, spin at ninety-three, and throw coefficient at one point one three. One point one three. All right. Um okay. So you, you don't have lap down bounce data checked, no? Uh no, I guess I don't. All right. Um could you create a new preset and then we'll 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 change that a little bit and then um we can try it. you can you can always switch back to the one you have now then yeah so i just hit custom and then yeah you just hit create preset and then um that should ask you to yeah type a name and then oh, you can see that. Go. all right All right. All right. And then I would put, uh, I would activate lab bounce data. Right. So, I mean, it's not really a check. It just makes the check uh, bigger <laughs> and white okay. for some reason. So <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> see. But then uh, I would put bounciness at 25, spin at 75, and throw at 120. Have you been playing for a while now in the game, by the way? Or... Yeah, I I uh, got this when Quest Two launched, and I got my okay two. Okay, so, so it's been since about October. All right, and you, you're taking all classes. Right, that's all set up. It's stuck on on Elo, or do you want to? Yeah, get basically, uh, I want to make a push towards the you know top one thousand, and uh, yeah. and also just how you know I want to be able to say in my life I've had VR ping pong coaching. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. All right. So, uh, the paddle that you have now is a, uh, like it's something that I created, and it's like a beginner paddle. I was making a video about it now, but like the video is not good, so it might be for next week. Um, okay. My paddle, my paddle is not that far removed from that one, right? Okay. I, I don't very, very fast stuff, but like, um, what it allows you to do is because it's a little bit slower, like a real. Mm -hmm. A, big, a little bit it allows you to really um appreciate spin and everything and and do like decent strokes mm -hmm. and then pull your strokes with a bit more power and the balls will still land if you do that with a fast pedal it will start going long very fast and then you start yeah. uh, holding yourself back which is a little bit bad so it's better to play with a little bit slower bet do full strokes and then afterwards when you feel confident in your strokes go with a faster bet and then you can you know what your good strokes are and then you can try to adapt them to make them land instead of just mm -hmm. back, right? That's that's more or less the idea of, uh, for a beginner pedal. But at the same time, the beginner pedal is a little bit like a control pedal. It gives you, you can accelerate, right? But it just gives you a lot of control on a shorter game. So let's let's just take a look at your forehand drive a little bit. Yeah. Go ahead. So have you done any drills or watched any videos? 
Yeah, I watched some YouTube videos about this stuff, and I downloaded your drills. Cool. Uh, just the beginner ones. And right. uh, I use it to warm up a lot, and I also will work on my forehands, especially with just the AI bot with like him right. targeted over there. Right, yeah. I, I noticed that you've watched some stuff. <laughs> it's very <laughs> it's very impressive in here because in real life it doesn't really happen <laughs> like that. <laughs> watch a video but then they can try it, right? In here. Right. Especially right. my serves, like whenever I go back to real ping pong I'm gonna be I wonder if this stuff translates because it does. Guess... It, like it, it, the lower your level is, the better the transfer is in a way, because yeah. you're moving a little bit slower, so they're not. There's like a bigger margin of error. But, um, yeah, it really depends. It really depends because your grip might be a little bit different. Maybe there's still some stuff that will happen that you're like, oh, I didn't realize it was like this in real life. But mm -hmm. that's gonna get better in the game as well. So when it gets better in the game, you will get better in real life too. So on your forehand, I already see something. I have a feeling that you you push the ball a little bit too much, right? Yeah. So you have to try to make sure, like everything in table tennis comes from, how do you say, kind of organic movements, right? So there's you're trying to have almost no stress at any point, so everything becomes fluent. If you look at Malong or anybody like that, you you can see that like they're never really in a in a weird position. Everything is just flowing, right? Mm -hmm. So how they do that is like. First of all, like their upper arm is kind of hanging uh, where it needs to be, and then their body moves moves that around, and then um, exactly, and then the forehand, uh, backhand is more forward, right, because it's in front of your body, mm -hmm. size your body, and to be able to use your legs and your hips and your shoulders, you just have to be able to just let your arm go a little bit, right. So if you if you push it forwards, you're going mm -hmm. in different direction than your body is. If you want to go more forwards, you go with your body forwards. Your, your arm should always go in kind of an arc, it just follows. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be like too much, but like what, what I just want to see a little bit is like a relaxed stroke like this. Like even your wrist can be a little bit relaxed. When you stop your arm, it's kind of like a, a whip action a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Do you get a lot of elbow in there? Does your elbow, your forearm move on your elbow much? Yeah, it's, it's well, it, you, you don't have to if you do like a big stroke, but in general, when these small things, it's just a little bit elbow, but it's mostly body, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's like, this gives you a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Your battle is following along and then you can add a little bit to it. But it's always following the momentum of your body. Because if if you go against it, like you can do that as well, but it's going to be much harder to control. Mm -hmm. So let me try. Doesn't, that's it. Doesn't have to be a big stroke. Just the idea of letting the arm instead of pushing it in a different direction. Is your elbow very close to your body? Have a feeling. Yeah, yeah, it can be. A lot of times, what I find myself doing is getting out of position. And then, like, then I'm choking up on my my yeah. shot. So there's something that you can do to to help that, and that's of course moving your legs. Um, but you don't have to you move both your legs right away. So if you notice the ball is coming here, you don't have space. Just you mm -hmm. move his leg back, and that creates a bit yeah. of space. That's it. So um, you don't have to. You don't. You, you never really want to stretch your arm when you're playing, right? Not for the moment. Mm -hmm. Not on a simple drive. So. But you don't want it here either, because then there's no, there's no transfer. You will notice, how do you say it? Maybe if you if you throw a frisbee, if you have any experience with that, you're not gonna uh -huh. here, right? You give it a bit of space, right? Right. In here, just make sure there's a bit of space. And it's the same with the back end. Like you, every, all of that makes sense. Like frisbee, if you take a frisbee and go outside, you can notice all the things that are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Also, for the frisbee, you need a you need a similar amount of space, right? That is ideal, and it's the same for yeah. for backhands and forehands do, table tennis. Do you keep your um? Do you have like one foot closer to the table than the other? Like, do you maybe put your left foot closer to the table? I mean, I guess I'm a right hand, but right. like, do I stand like regular or southpaw for ping pong? 
Yeah, you usually, by the way, are you using an adapter as well, or? Yeah, I'm using the Sam Lackey adapter. And you, you know how to hold your paddle, right? You right, with my finger paddle. along the... On the, along the bottom, right? Uh-huh. And then your thumb, your thumb up here, right? Like yeah. All right, that's good. Yeah, I was going to forget. So yeah, <laughs> your feet is the same. So I'll explain because yeah, it depends a bit. Not everybody needs that, but it makes sense. So you were just playing a forehand, right? So let, let me just change. Um, so basically, the, the, the table is, is not super important, right? So what's important is, the, is where the ball is coming from, right? So uh, I'm going to show it like a left-hander because it's going to be a bit easier. Right. So when the ball is coming from there, um, for the forehand, because you have all this body to work with, you want to leave space besides your body and do your stroke besides your body. That means that if your foot is forward, you're blocking your own movement, right? So your foot needs to be a little bit back and then compared to the ball coming in, it's like, how much is this as an angle? Right. Right. So you're almost parallel to the table. Like, but you're, you're like at 70 degrees with the ball coming in, I think. Okay. That gives you, that gives you space to like start your stroke from your knee more or less and then go forward, right? Mm-hmm. And then the easiest way actually to see where you have to be with your feet, to go to your back end position on the same line. Mm-hmm. And you're like 90 degrees in front of the ball, it becomes diagonal. Yeah. In your case, of course, that should be there. So if you're there and you're, you're playing a back end, you should be like this. Your legs should be at 90 yeah. degrees the ball coming in. And if you take this, this line and then you move it over to your forehand, that's where your legs need to be. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because this allows you to move from forehand to backhand on the same line. Right? Yeah. That's space in your forehand and it is right behind the ball on your backhand. Right? Of course, all of this you have to change a little bit as the angles change, but that's more. Mm-hmm. more the idea. All right. Yeah. Space besides your body for a forehand, uh, behind the ball on your back end. Okay. Um, actually, since we can call in the ball machine now, I'm going to do that. All right. And, uh, I, I'll, I'll come to your side and I can show you maybe some of the details. Just a second. You can ignore the ball for now. All right. So this wasn't possible before, but this is it's gonna be very useful. Yeah. Because also if I show you something, you can see it very close. Mm-hmm. Of course, the thing is, I'm I'm still a left-hander, and uh, yeah, I need to do a little bit of mental gymnastics yeah. to imagine. <laughs> uh, I asked the developer to to allow to mirror me, right? So like you would see me All as right. a as a right-hander, and I would see you as a left-hander. That would be pretty handy. That would be cool. All right, so let's see. Um, let's start with the uh, forehand. Okay, I'm controlling it now from here. So right, just, yeah. Um, I think it should be this one. All right. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do a forehand for, for a bit so you can, you can see it. All right. All right. All right, there we go. I have, I have it still a bit slow. I'm going to speed it up. All right. All right. This is more or less, I think, the speed that you have it on as well. In this case, I'm doing a simple drive, which means I'm using my body, just letting my arm follow and add just a little bit of speed and a little bit of brush on the ball. But I'm mostly going through the ball, right? It's mostly forward. Yeah. Comparison to a tough spin, which is more, right, more brushing. So this one, it's important because it gives you um, stability, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're not ready to attack yet, you you can just do a, a simple stroke like this, and it will be easy to control, right? All right. Let's see. All right. All right. Wait just a second. I think it should be this one. There we go. Slow it down. So 
not bad. It's not bad. If you're a little bit up, you can be yeah. a little bit more relaxed, and you can let the. Uh, you're also like kind of stopping your movement. You can really let it play out a little bit more. Okay. Uh, you can let if you leave leave your wrist a little bit loose. You know, you don't have to. How do you say it? You don't have to make that much effort to to stop the pedal itself, right? Just let it let it go a little bit, because right now it's a little bit more stocky. It's gonna I right, mean, right. freeze and stuff. Um, so always try to look for a good fluent motion. And like I said, like you can, I think you can leave a little bit more space between your body and your arm, a little bit. Okay. this you're doing it really well and you're good. missing a little already so that's that's very good so let's let's move on to the back end um okay just for a second all right yeah so this this time i'm behind all right 90 degrees mm -hmm. wait i have i have ping ball on to watch you but for me it's weird okay okay now the ball just disappeared <laughs> Still going on my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's weird. That's that's like a new. All right. <laughs> the ball is disappearing. <laughs> like what's here for me? <laughs> I'm gonna stop it for a second. All right. See if if it works when I just activate it again. No, I'm not seeing anything. Oh man. That's new. Never had that before. Um, yeah, it looks fine on my screen. Yeah. Yeah, I just put ping ball on to see your contact, and now uh, <laughs> I don't see any. Oh well, I'll just look. No, <laughs> I'm playing. Uh, okay. Um, right. Wait. Could you could you challenge me again? Yeah. Sure. Okay, let's see. Like I always come up to like bugs like this because I use uh -huh. more than most people, but <laughs> yeah. All right. So when you first switch it on, mm -hmm. it always spawns it from the ceiling. Yeah, for some reason, which is very weird, but that looks normal. Okay. And, and then it comes out. Right now it's normal. Okay. So back end, right? It's a little mm -hmm. bit more like what I said before not to do, which which is doing the stroke forward, right? In the uh, back end, you kind of do it, right? But it's not it's not just forward. It's also like brushing on top of the ball a little bit. That gives you a little bit extra control because if you brush, it creates an arc, so it's easier to land the ball on the table. And the way you move your body is, uh, in your case, left or right. For me, it's right to left, right? The movement of weight. You don't have to do too much of that, just a little bit. A little bit of shoulders. And the battle follows, right? Right. Let's take a look. Does it look fast? Okay. 
I can go a little bit for, more forward with your stroke. So then you up. If you feel like it's take a step back from there. This kid but it wouldn't to be too big. So I'm a lot more comfortable with my back end in games. Yeah. Oh, I can see that. I can see that. I still have a feeling, but maybe that's also because of your size, because I don't know, you seem a little bit smaller than I am. I have a feeling you're really playing close to your body still, right? So you can be a little bit more away from your body for your back end as well, right? Yeah. Instead of being here, like just like this with the frisbee, whatever mm -hmm. the ideal distance is. Well, let's see. You know, what happened with that? Well. So this is how I would, these are backspin shots, right? This is how I would play them. Any difference, by the way, with uh, the, base, the beginner pedal that I... Yeah, I'm hitting the net a lot more. It's got a lot less heat on it. Yeah, exactly. You, like, it gives you a little bit more feeling, so you have to do a little bit more yourself. Um, um, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I, 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 I will, <laughs> I will show you the back. Okay. Uh, so, what you're doing is you go a little bit down up, right? I mean, I do it huh. a little bit as well, but I shouldn't be doing it. So, what you want to do, you want to stay as parallel to the table as you can, almost, right? So, push is is really just that. Uh -huh. okay. So the difference between the push and the slice. Slice really goes ball, right? And the push uh -huh. just goes forward. So okay. the same as the difference between a, 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 a drive and a topspin, or topspin drive, right? And it's uh -huh. looking for effective and looking for stability. So the push in this case is a stable shot, which allows you to keep it short and let it bounce two times, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can also play a little bit more through the ball. And this stroke is very important for timing. So you want to catch the the push when it's still going up, right before it goes to its highest point. Okay. We'll explain that it's like um, if if I catch it uh, after its highest point, I have to lift it over the net. That's what you were doing, right? right. If I get it a little bit before. The momentum is still going up, and it should, you know, that, that momentum will help you lift the ball over the net. Yeah. So that's the idea. If if you take okay. it late, it's not bad, but then maybe you have to, right, like you did, add just a little bit mm -hmm. more to it. All right. So. Mm. You can catch the barrier. Very close to bounce. It's hard for me to say when we could grab and voice. Yeah, sure. Just try to make sure you get it before the highest point. I think right now you're taking it a little bit too late still. I mean, it's never too late if you can make it, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's something you can play with. So if you, if you look yeah. to catch it earlier, you can cancel out a bit of the spin. So if you're getting a very heavy backspin ball, so for example, yeah. from opponents, you can make it a bit easier if you catch it early enough. 
But in principle, I, you, you have quite a lot of control. Also, like what I do see, you know, I, I never see the ball bounce twice. Right? Oh. You're, you're letting it come over here, right? If you catch it a bit earlier, you're to... That's it, that's it. Ah. Width, that's not short. I'll show you something. Okay. Now, if you go all the way into the backspin, just like go under it, um, it's a bit harder to control. What you can do is always go a little bit with a little bit more from the side, so you're less affected by the backspin, right? Mm -hmm. in, in, in forehand and backhand. And also, if you try to approach it always like this, the wrist on the side, you might not always get there, for sure if it's very short. So you can also uh -huh. go straight in with the head down, right? Like this. Okay. And that might be very helpful if, if you're like waiting all the way out here. And it's pretty yeah. short. You have a little bit of right. Yeah. Let's take a look at the forehand. case hey it's more like the back end as well in this case also on the forehand you're pushing the thing that i said you shouldn't be doing <laughs> scooping it up no you should be doing it because you're actually pushing it right? you should actually pushing the ball timing in the forehand is the same as the back end it's actually very good to get you know, feeling for the ball feel for timing improve your serve and stuff as well because it's so hard to the way it works. Just so you know, if you know that you're pushing back a, a, a serve and the ball is sitting up too much, uh, instead of doing something else, the idea with a push is that you just change the angle a little bit, right? So if it's sitting up too much, it means that your bat is a bit too open, so you close it a bit more. Mm -hmm. right. That's basically the idea. It's the same with, um, uh, with, the counter, with the counters, like the normal drives. If you know that they're yeah. going, you just close it a little bit more. If they're going into the net, you just open it a bit more, right? So these, are, these strokes are very stable, solid, normal strokes, and just the angle should be able to match most of the, the things. When you're going to top spin and slicing, and you're actually using a to compensate instead of just uh, opening and closing that. Um, if I can. Yeah. So, if you catch it early enough, <laughs> again, make it bounce twice. If you go to the side, right, mm -hmm. you, the back spin, you can give you a little bit more control. It can also allow you to find angles. And again, you don't always have to go to the side like this, you can really go forward. And for sure in the forehand, it can help because you're prepared here for a forehand and it's coming short. It can be a very mm -hmm. long distance, right? So, yeah. But the closer your body is, not the closer because you don't want to be all the way up here, right? But you want your body to be over your stroke, more or less, when you do this. You don't want it to be all the way up there, right? You don't want to be stretched. You want to be you want to step in and of course right now we're just looking for the right feeling but ideally when you do these steps, you step in we always step out as well because right. if you do this game and you stay here you're going to be in trouble right, right. right. Um, let's see no wait Make it fast. that's it That by playing soccer or by playing a little that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Right. Let's take a look at spin of the ball. That's that's already uh, a bit next level, but I imagine since you've been in here for a while, you've already tried. Let's see what that looks like for you. All right. Uh, wait. Um, no, that's your back end. Let's start with your forehand. All right. 
se décider. Ouais. Have, have you tried it before? The 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 top spin drill. Yeah. I'm always kind of bad at it. All right, all right, all right. Okay, then this is cool because then you'll be able to do it soon, I'm sure. Because this is this is actually this is where table tennis becomes table tennis, of course, when you start. Right. <laughs> With my own paddle settings, I can spin it over the net pretty reliably, but this is the yeah. first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, let's let's stay with this because then you you yeah. you understand how how you brush, and it will right. be easy. Your other paddles, though, you can always switch back whenever you want. Um, yeah, I'll I'll show you. So I'll, uh -huh. I'll take the same uh, as you have, right? I, uh, actually, I'm already using it. Right. So this is the same as one. So yeah. now you still kind of how do you say it? You you still don't really seem to grasp the idea that the ball is like sticking to the to the rubber and you can actually lift it right mm -hmm. so actually to show you in real life what they normally do is they put like maybe a ball here and then they they let you spin it over uh -huh. to show you how you can grab the ball and and, uh -huh. and lift it from a start, from a st stable position right you can always right. start as well, uh, at any point to get a feeling for that but in here what you want to do is like really when in the moment of contact really just brush the ball right mm -hmm. if you just do like this you know if, if you play it too soft the the effect that it has on the rubber is going to make it go down so you really have to cancel out the backspin a little bit by brushing mm -hmm. the ball all right all right You can take a little more distance from the top. That's it. In this stroke, that's it more, right? So in this stroke, I know it's much more that you kind of do like a pushy, a pushing mm -hmm. motion, right? So that kind of blocks you. So you really want to uh, allow that swing because it's going to help you. So yeah. if you think, you don't have to think that the paddle has to go straight. It can go in a curve, right? And then you just think of like centrifugal for forces or whatever, right? You're trying to use them. You mm -hmm. try to block them mostly. Because now I see sometimes you like kind of do that. Yeah. You're going in, in, a, in a different direction. Just try to realize where your paddle is going. Like you have to learn the timing of them. That's it. Yeah. And then when it's on a backspin ball, if you notice that it's going down, you can go a little bit more up in your movement, right? Mm -hmm. with your legs right so before you're moving forward like this when you're coming from a backspin ball you go more down right you lift the ball and you can actually use your legs for the lifting right so we'll give mm -hmm. you a, that's it and it can be remember try not to move to to end your uh, movement here close to your face try to put in the direction Playing, right? Of course, if, if you let it go a little bit, it's no problem. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to do this. Right? It's too short. Yeah. And always think of that. Like this whole arm, in principle, it should be able to do the same movement almost totally relaxed. If you notice that you only you can do the space, then you probably need to give it a bit more space. Okay. Fine. You can lift it. Yeah. You're focusing, focusing a bit more on the legs, right? Which means, like in the moment of contact, you you're not thinking about the acceleration anymore. So you still uh, need a little bit, you know. A little bit more. But still, the moment of contact, you need to really grip the ball and lift it over. Yeah. So you don't really have to go forward, but just really. So right now, I don't, I don't really care if it goes into the net or anything. You just try to find this feeling, even if it goes long, of brushing and really grabbing the ball, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
you can do it smaller as well. Like it doesn't have to be a really big stroke. It can be just, just this, right? But it's okay. all about the moment you touch the ball. A little bit extra. Right. everything at the same time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think you, the main thing is, is that's the like um, uh, still very close to your body and, and, and a little bit not, not yeah. so relaxed. So really try to open up. So if you just stretch your arm, how far how far does it go? All right. All right. So in this case Acceleration, yeah. You like you can let it come from yeah. underarm, right? Uh huh. And when you start, it's more or less stretched. And then when you hit the ball, you just add a little bit to it and keep your wrists uh, relaxed. All right. Let's see. All right. You can give it a little bit more space. And actually, in this case, you can. Let the ball drop a little bit more and then really brush it up. That's fine. All right, right. Okay, okay. There's another there's another thing that I see, just very quickly. So I see you're doing like this a little bit. Like I'm overdoing it, right? You're doing this. The idea is that you actually you wrap around the ball so you go forward, right? So, so if you hit the ball at this point, you go more or less straight. If you do anything, you go more towards the table, not away from the table. Because if you do it like this, you really have to touch it in the perfect moment, right? Mm -hmm. Like this, like you can really wrap it and guide it, right? Like this, you're not really guiding it anywhere, so. All right, okay. Right. And if, if you notice it's going into the net, you don't have to go in this case, because like I said, you were trying to spin it up. You don't have to open your angle anymore. The only thing you need to do is either a little bit more spin or go mm -hmm. a little more through the ball. So it goes a little bit more forward. Okay. You can you can go more through the ball. Can get stuck if you train on your own make sure um, um if you train on your own make sure you don't stay too long with one exercise uh, because then you can really be demotivating right um just do something else come back to it later when you have like yeah. fresh perspective this is, and normally yeah. i can get the ball over the net more reliably but this is definitely one of my weakest things is yeah. like at one point, I went really well, and then I gave you more information, and I think it uh, it confused you more than it helped you. So I'm just going to show you mine, so you can see it. Um, so what you do is more. Um, it's hard for me to miss, but <laughs> you're doing more like this, right? And you see, even for me, it's harder to control. So when you see it from the side, you probably see what the problem is as well, right? And it's all the here. So try to create space and you can use your body, everything to guide the ball in the right direction, right? So even if, if I'm late, I'm also not getting making it, right? Like if I if I'm not doing it well, it goes into the net. So what I need to do also is really the timing is important, but most of all, this feeling of brush, right? So maybe before you start with this when you're on your own. Try, try to do this and try to really get a feel of, of how to lift the ball. Because in the beginning, maybe you'll, you'll do something like this or it will go straight forward. But you really have to trust, trust that you can lift the ball this way. It's, it's a mental thing as well, right? Sometimes you think, no, no, like your body says that it's not possible, <laughs> but it is, right? You just need to give it 
your battle needs to have enough momentum to, to grab the ball. If it's too soft, you know, and if you're afraid mm -hmm. of it, if you're not going enough into the ball, right, like this, you really need to grab it. Yeah. Right. All right. Let's take a look for a second at the back end. For some people, it's easy. I'll show you. All right. And you can see what's incoming. And it's a little bit more risky. Mm -hmm. So you can actually just wait to do almost all wrist. It's in this case, the back end can really use your legs. It's just from down up, right? So down, mm -hmm. up, right? And again, you're kind of guiding the ball with your body. Everything is going in a, in a similar direction. And you're also going forward, not backwards, right? So mm -hmm. you're brushing. Jesus. There you go. All right. Let's take a look. The trouble that you're having now is super realistic. So you have to be happy yeah. about that. So if with this battle, <laughs> you do start to be able to make it, that means uh -huh. that you will probably start to be able to do it in real life as well. Because you're starting okay. to get for actually brushing the ball. So it's a yeah. good thing. If you could do it with your other paddle, maybe you got very used to it already and maybe it's not right. Really yeah. I've played yeah. with those settings for a long time, so this feels super dead to me. Yeah, but actually it has it has very good grip and good throw, so it should be easy to lift the ball, but you really need a good contact. It should actually be easier, but the, the pedal itself is not really helping you, so you really need to create a brush. You're not doing a bad job, it's just... But I think what you're doing um, with your other pedal is uh -huh. playing like it's tennis, playing more... Yeah, football. you're right. Yeah, yeah so, when you were showing me what I was doing, it looked very tennis. Yeah. But, I mean, you're, you're free to play more tennis because, like, some of the top 10 players or top 20 players now are good tennis players, and they have very tennis strokes. So in the game, it works yeah, with the right battle settings like you had before. But if you want to be able to do it in real life, this is going to be more representative. Okay. But it's up to you. Yeah, you can really choose. Where are you hitting on the paddle with this? Like I wanna, I feel like my better shots come from the tip of my paddle as opposed to the base. Well, I don't know exactly what it is because it can be different between what you feel and what it actually is, but uh, the spot is here, right? Okay. It's not here, right? It's really this up, upper third part. If you really play okay. here normally, that's gonna be like a bad touch in, right. in real life, but uh, I can hear it's perfect touch, so it should be fine. But this is also because of, you know, centrifugal forces, you know, it's where there's like a little bit more power to it. And it's the same mm -hmm. for like, it's also the same, the same top third that you want to hit. Actually, if you're, if you're returning serves and stuff, you can actually use the position to, to make it easier to return backspin or to keep the ball shorter as well. Because if you go here, you add more spin. But if you go here, you can keep it a bit more dead. That's like yeah. another level, right? All right. It's a good question. It's a very good question. Right. You're not doing bad at all. You're you're a better player. All right. All right. It's good. So right now you're doing it a little bit with an open bat, but it's good mm -hmm. because it's still not open like this. Like you're still a little bit closed. So what you can do is you can take it from there and then try to go a little bit forward. But the more you go forward, the more you will have to brush the ball to lift it. If you do it like this, I can do it slow, right? Then the more I close it, the more I have to brush the ball, right? <laughs> Very strong. I mean, uh, in, in, in this single moment when you touch the ball. So uh, let, let, me, let me see. So, so you see, like, I'm using my wrist just the moment the ball is there, right? Not actually mm -hmm. a very strong motion. I can do a strong motion, All right? Is, right, and but that's harder to control. I mean, and harder to track as well for the 
for the drop. But basically, you're just doing this, and you can do it quite slow. The slower you do it, the more you will need to use your legs to lift the ball. So your whole body goes up, it will help you. Okay, I'm overdoing it a little bit now. Mm -hmm. The thing I said, the thing I said before, from when you're like pushing and you catch mm -hmm. it early, you can do that a little bit with backspin as well. So you can catch it earlier, and then you will have less trouble, like getting the spin out of it, right? Yeah. If, you get, you know, if you let it drop, you have to compensate for all the backspin. But if you get it when it's going up still, you can use that momentum. Right? It's the same in the forehand and in the back end. So if you notice that like, you really have trouble lifting the ball, just mm -hmm. it sooner, right? Just touch okay. it All right. Let's see. Actually, my almost finished. Yeah, my battery is just at two percent. It's session. Okay. All right. So, um, do you have any specific questions, though? Um, this might be a, a topic for a bigger session, but the guys I have the most trouble with are the dudes that let the ball hit way down here and then do this thing with it. Side spin stuff, yeah. 